time for children's story time on You Scott Counting You Music Radio. Today's story is The Haggis by Michael Foundas. The Horrible Haggis. Morag was a wee lassie that lived in the Highlands of Scotland. She lived with her mum and dad in a cottage near the edge of the woods. Morag's granny lived at the other side. If Morag wanted to visit her, she had to go through the woods. Either her mum or dad went with her, and she was never allowed to go there by herself. There were creatures in the woods, foxes, wolves, and the most dangerous of all, the haggis. Though Morag and her mum and dad had never seen a haggis, they'd heard stories, and at night, as they lay safe in their beds, they heard its frightening moans. Morag's dad had to go into town. I'll be gone all day, he told them, and then left. Morag's mum was busy in the kitchen, baking rhubarb pies and making some treacle toffee. On the counter was a huge salmon that Morag's dad had caught earlier that morning, before she'd even got out of bed. Can we go and see Granny today? she asked her mum. We can't, hen. I've got to finish these pies and toffee, and then I have to fix the salmon and make some hot scones for supper tonight. We can go tomorrow, she said. But Mum, Granny isn't feeling well, and I'm worried about her. Can I please take a basket to her? I'll fill it with shortbread, oat cakes, sausage rolls, a few bannocks, and the leftover grouse from last night, Morag pleaded. Oh no, Hen, you can't go alone, and I'll not let you walk through the woods alone. It's not safe. I heard the haggis last night. Its moans were low and very scary, Morag. Mum, I'm a big girl now. I'll run as fast as I can. Please let me go and see Granny, she whined. Her mum thought about it for a while and said, Och, all right, lassie, but you run as fast as you can and don't stop till you're at your Granny's house. Fill the basket and be off with you then. Morag was excited. This was her first trip to Granny's house by herself. She wasn't afraid of the haggis. She put four pieces of shortbread into the basket, then added six sausage rolls, a dozen oat cakes, three bannocks and the grouse. She put a tartan cloth on top and shut the basket. I'm ready, Mum. Her mum was a bit hesitant to let her go, but decided she was old enough to do it. Hurry, Morag. No stopping to pet the rabbits or play with the birds. Give us a hug then, lassie. Morag wrapped her arms around her mum's waist. I'll be careful, she assured her. She put on her woolly tartan cape, pulling the hood up over her dark brown hair. Cheerio, mum, she said, and hurried into the woods. She hadn't gone far when she heard a lark singing. She looked around for it and saw it up high on the branch of a birch tree. She stopped and listened to it for a few minutes, trying to imitate its warbles. Remembering her mum's instructions to not stop, she hurried on. After a few minutes, a large pale brown hare hopped across her path. Its ears were long, its tail fluffy and round, and its whiskers wiggled back and forth as it leapt behind a currant bush. Morag was going to chase it, but then remembered what her mum had said. She hurried on her way. She wasn't too far from the end of the woods when she heard a loud moaning sound. She stopped and listened. What's that noise? She whispered. She heard it again. Oh, it must be the haggis, she said, frightened. She held tightly onto the basket and ran as fast as she could to Granny's house, not even turning to look back now and then. She ran up to her Granny's front door and knocked. Let me in, Granny, she cried. The haggis is chasing me. It's going to eat me. Please hurry, Granny. Her Granny was sitting in a rocking chair in front of the fire, Goodness me, lassie, hold on, I'm old and I can't move quickly any more, she said as she walked slowly to the door. She pulled it open and saw Morag standing in her tartan cape and carrying a basket. Come in, lass. Morag went inside and put the basket down on the kitchen table. She started taking things out of it so Granny could see. Granny, here are some goodies for you. She stopped talking and went to look out of the window. What are you looking at? Granny asked. The haggis, it was in the woods, she replied. Granny walked over and stood next to Morag, gazing out of the window. 
In all my years, I've never seen the haggis, not once. I hear its moans, but never saw it. I wonder if there is such a thing. Morag looked at her. If it's not a haggis, what's moaning? I don't know, but you'd think somebody would have seen it by now. All I've ever seen is a wolf, a few foxes, hedgehogs and hares. Never seen a haggis. In fact, I don't even know what a haggis looks like. Mum told me once it was fat and round, with a snout like a pig, and it's got sharp teeth and long claws on its feet, Morag said, walking over to the couch and sitting down. Granny sat in her chair. Oh, Morag, there's no such thing as that. It's all nonsense. Tell me, would you like to spend the night here with your granny? I'll call your mum and ask her if it's all right. Oh, yes, granny, I'd love to stay here. Granny called and asked Morag's mum, and she said it was fine. She and Morag spent the day together having fun. That night, Morag slept in the same bed with her granny. As they lay there, they heard a noise outside. It sounded like someone getting in the trash. What's that noise, granny? Morag asked, snuggling closer to her. Granny got up and looked out of the window. She could see the moon glowing and the stars shining. She saw a shadow. Something was moving at the back of the house. Morag peeked through the curtains. It's the haggis, Granny. I'm scared. And she cried out, running into the bedroom and pulling the blankets up over her head. Granny looked again. There was a shadow. Maybe it was just a fox or perhaps a cat. It looked too big for either of those, though. After a while, she didn't see the shadow any longer. So she went upstairs and crawled into bed with Morag. Whatever it was, it's gone now, she said, hugging Morag tightly. When the sun rose behind the hills and the mist disappeared, Granny and Morag got up. Granny stoked the fire with chunks of peat and cooked a big pot of porridge. While Morag ate, Granny had an idea. She was going to find out once and for all if there was a haggis hiding in the woods and if it was mean and dangerous. She left Morag at the table. I'll be back in a while, Morag. Stay here and eat, then read a book by the fire. Off she went into the woods. She saw a few ravens and owls high in the trees. Occasionally a fox would trot by in the distance. She just passed a rowan tree covered with red berries when she heard a moaning sound. She stopped. There it is, she whispered, listening carefully. Again the moans came, moving through the forest in loud echoing noises. She went in the direction of the moan. Slowly, she crept. Just then something bumped into the back of her. She screamed, thinking it was the haggis about to eat her. She turned round and it was Morag. Morag, what are you doing here? I told you to stay in the cottage. I was scared, Granny. I wanted to be with you, Morag explained. All right, lass, but be quiet. I think it's up ahead. They stepped over fallen branches, around large green ferns and oak tree trunks. Another moan was heard, sending chills up Granny's spine. Sit right here, Morag, she ordered. Granny parted a bush of gorse. There, sitting at a fire, was an old man. He was dressed in tattered clothes and had no shoes on. He wore a cap like an elf would wear, and he had a long beard, grey and dirty. Suddenly he turned around and looked right at Granny. She gasped. Come out, he muttered. Granny took Morag by the hand and the two of them headed towards the fire. Well, what have we here? A wee lass and her Granny? What are you doing in my woods? My name's Morag and this is my Granny. Are you a haggis? she asked. The man started laughing. A haggis? Why on earth are you asking that, lass? My mum and dad and all the other folk in the village say there's a haggis that lives in the forest and it eats people. We can hear it groaning all the time, she answered. The old man laughed and laughed. That's not a haggis, lass. That's me. My name's Robbie McRufus, by the way. And you are? he asked. I'm Morag and this is my granny, she answered, reaching her hand to shake his. Well, Morag, you're a bonny wee lass. 
Never mind all this talk of monsters and moans. You see, I suffer from rheumatism and I moan a lot. I've got a rather loud voice. Besides that, a haggis isn't a monster. It's something you eat. Granny, feeling foolish, started laughing along with him and Morag joined in. They spent the day with Robbie. Before they left, Morag asked, Robbie, why do you live out here by yourself? Wouldn't you rather live in the village with the rest of us? No, lass, I like it out here. At night I see the stars and it's so quiet. I can hear them whispering to each other. Me and the animals, we all get along just fine. Don't worry about me, lass. Morag had a thought. Robbie, can Granny and I come and visit you every day? She smiled at him. Robbie replied, Why, sure, lass. You and your granny are welcome here any time. But don't bring too many people with you. I like my quiet. Oh, all right. Granny and I will keep it a secret, won't we, granny? Her granny nodded. Every day, granny and Morag went to visit Robbie in the woods. Sometimes they took him shortbread. Sometimes they took him bannocks. And sometimes he cooked porridge or mince and tatties for them. From then on, whenever Morag's mum and dad or any of the villagers heard the groans and wonder of the haggis, she laughed. But she never told anyone. Robbie was their secret. I hope you liked it.